Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and I've been thinking more about my nether hub. And sometimes when I start thinking about things, I start thinking about other things because I don't have good focus. But you know what I realized? It's like, what should I do with the walls of my nether hub? And I was looking at it, and I was like, well, the floors are this blue. Maybe I should do something that works well with this blue. And I was like, I wanted to have something that reflects the rest of the bay or some other elements of the bay. What do I have that reflects the other elements of the bay? And I started thinking about it more and more, and what I've decided is I think I want to do nether brick squares that hold, like, colored glass panes. And I don't want them to be exactly the same as these. These are just, like, 8x8 eight eight squares with um, two thick kind of diagonals. And I want to do something a little bit different from that, but I'm not sure how much different. And in the process of doing that, I'm going to need to obviously make even more glass. But I'm also going to need more nether brick, because look at this. This is an insufficient quantity of nether brick to really aggressively solve this problem. So, why don't we hop down here. As you can see, nether brick supplies across the board. They're, uh, uh found an extra one. Well, that solved that problem. Anyway, so I figure what we want to do is we want to go back to our nether hub and start cooking some nether rack. Luckily, there's lava downstairs, so that won't be too much of a problem. But then I was like, well, what am I gonna do while I wait for all this nether rack to cook? And I realized that I've also got another problem where this wall here and this wall here really, uh, they need something. And I was trying to figure out what that something is and I realized it's basically this wall needs to cut diagonally toward the tunnel. And I did some math on this. Basically, to actually get the slope right, it would need to be, at least coming from this direction, like four and a half. Like, you want to know what four and a half looks like? Let's come down here. Basically, I would alternate between a four block and a five block slope as I cut in. Watch. So we start here, and we say, let's say this is block number one, right? This is this is it, block number one. So one, two, three, four. And then we're here, and then we go one, two, three, four, five. And then we cut in again, one, two, one, two, three, four. And then we go in again, and it's one, two, three, four, five. And, and it just kind of keeps going on and on like that for a while. And there is something fun and mathematically great about cutting through all this and, and having it mathematically precise. But there's also something time-consuming about it that will satisfy the immediate problem of, hey, how is it? how long is it going to take to cook all this uh, nether rack? The answer, a long time. Way too much time. So, we also need to have a place to cook all the nether rack that's going to be loaded. And I thought started thinking about this. Maybe I don't want to have this little mini base right here if I'm about to hew through it all and cut it all up. So, let's go ahead and move these furnaces somewhere less in the way for the time being. I think in the grand tradition of the furnace house, we will create a furnace portal. Because, you know, it's awesome looking. It's incomplete, just like everything we do. Because, uh, you know, nothing can ever be truly perfect. Um, but yeah, so we can just go ahead... And start feeding netherrack into this. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to run downstairs with these buckets and actually gather the materials to do all this. But I can do that in a time skip. So anyway, here we go. Time skip. Well, would you look at that? That's already way more open. Now, until I actually get some glass down on the floor here, I don't want to put the ceiling too high because we'll get ghasts or whatever spawning, and that is undesirable. They need a 4x4 space. So I'm trying to make sure the ceiling in this part here is all three or less, or precisely three anyway. But yeah, look at this. This doesn't feel like a tunnel in the same way anymore. Like, we still have these cool signs, and what I'm probably going to do is still have, like, an archway over this center path, but have glass squares that look out into here and have some other glass. I'm still working out exactly how I want to do it. But core concept, this, I think, works. And we'll do the same thing over on this side. Have that pop in the same way. So here we go. Time skip. 
as happy as I am with mining this side out, you know, we can't stop there. I started mining out this side as well. So we've got a much more open, teardrop-shaped overall experience here, which I think is going to have a lot of value. Now, one thing I was thinking was I should incorporate elements from within Red Sky Bay into the walls here. So what I'm doing in this segment is I'm putting in panes of 8x8 eight eight square pieces of glass comparable to the ones in the Red Sky Bay sign. I'm thinking maybe on this side, I'll do something kind of more like how we do um, the walls of the death house with maybe some crazy wallpaper color terracotta or something. Not sure exactly. I was thinking for this back wall here, though, I want to do the gray from like the castle, from uh, like the walls outside of Castle Ravenloft with the gray concrete powder there or something. Still still trying to figure out exactly how I want to do it. Trying to work out exactly how I want to pull these squares that I've got generally in place here across and into the ceiling. I figure when I do, though, I'll pull these netherbrack bricks up and out, like, into here to make, like, a cross grid. Possibly at an upward angle. And then add red glass to that as well. So, if you guys have any thoughts on any of this, definitely leave a comment with your thoughts. Right now, I'm thinking I'm going to leave the netherrack on the other side of the glass here. But also, I'd be open to the idea of putting weird stuff back there, too, down the line. I like this because it lets me have something I want to do now, or that I want to have look good now. But then, uh, it'll look better later. So, anyway, next thing we need to do. In my last episode, or one of my recent episodes, I used a whole bunch of light blue dye to make the blue glass here. Did not get enough light blue dye, and I realized I didn't actually have any footage of me explaining where I got all those orchids from. So I learned a new trick that I'm going to share with you guys today. So we are going to hop out here with our... Oh no, it's nighttime. time. We're going to hop right back in here. Ooh, every part of this was a bad idea. Immediate regret... Having turned night into day, we will fly past our drive-in movie theater and nibble a little bit on this chicken snack, then find ourselves a nice little patch of swamp. Now some of you guys are probably saying, Joe, what do you need a swamp for? Well, swamps have the ability to grow blue orchids, as you can see here, with only bone meal. So like, I can just like run around this swampy area here, get a ton of these blue orchid flowers, and then uh, harvest them to uh, be able to make all the dyes I need for my crazy thing. Now, I don't want to do this when Tango's online because, you know, there might be, he might be spoiled if uh, he sees me doing all this Blue Orchid stuff. He'll be like, oh no, I know what Joe Hills is doing in his next video now. And, you know, some people really don't like spoilers. Also, I watched a movie last night while I did some of the digging. Um, my wife is out of town, and she doesn't normally really like to watch horror movies. So we don't watch a ton of them, but uh, Get Out was added to HBO recently. So I watched that, and it was really good. I'm not going to go into spoilers. Definitely not a kid-friendly movie, but a really interesting one. It's written by a comedian and directed by one, and he is good at timing. And being good at timing makes him good at horror as well. So, yeah. Let's see. So anyway, I would recommend that if you are looking for a fun horror movie. It's it's actually got a lot of jokes in it, which I liked. Didn't take itself too seriously. Okay, so we are going to gather... We're going to need so much of this stuff. Honestly, it kind of makes sense to just run through here and go... Oh, well, we're out now. So, well, that was the maximum extent to which we could continue to do that. So we're just going to grab all these. And the sun is setting once more. So, in order to avoid the terrors of the night, let's go ahead and fly back toward our base. Luckily, now that we've got this extra portal over by the uh, fly-in movie theater here, we don't have to head all the way back to the waterfall. Although do we, we do like give ourselves concussions if we smack into it too hard. So let's not do that again. Whoops.
Okay. And now that we're back here, take those blue orchids, turn them all into dye, and we are well on our way to generating all the light blue glass we're going to need. So it's going to take some time to dig all this out. I'm trying to think what else is going on with me or what else might be going on with you. I don't know if you guys have started doing your Christmas decorations yet, but we just got our Christmas tree in on Friday. Um, in America, it's traditional to do that sort of thing no earlier than the Friday after Thanksgiving. But since my wife was leaving for her work trip, it made sense for us to get on that ahead of time. Or as early as possible, basically. So we've got the whole tree set up, and we've got those lights that um, have a switch where you can switch them between being multicolored or being like a warm, glowing, like candlelight. So of course my wife and I prefer the beautiful, warm, glowing candlelight. And my daughter knows where the switch is and loves switching it to multicolored because she says it's a lot prettier. Um, yeah, and we're clearly not going to win that one. Uh, also this year is the first year that my daughter is uh, really paying attention to where the ornaments go. So in the past, like all the little daycare ornaments and stuff that my daughter would make, uh, my wife would always kind of put on the back of the tree where you can't really see them, but like my daughter would like to play like with her trains and stuff on that part of the tree. And then she'd get to see them and it would make her happy. This year, no. My daughter's like, these need to go where everyone can see them. So it's kind of one of those things where uh, passing the torch generationally in terms of Christmas trees. Howdy, Cub. How's it going? Yeah, because my wife has always been, um, like back when, she, uh, before we lived, uh, together, she would, uh, do her own Christmas tree with, uh, her roommate, and, uh, they would, I say with her roommate, her roommate would always come home and be like, oh, Marion did the tree, looks awesome again, obviously. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, so she's got a very particular way she likes Christmas trees to be done. And, uh, everyone else is gonna have to deal with it. You know, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, I actually screwed this up. These edge case pieces here should not be the blue glass. I need to empty these out. Because those are gonna have to be the colors of the, uh, large panes that are gonna go in the grid. So this one, for example, and then these two need to be pulled. Okay, cool. So now that we got that taken care of, um, yeah, there's just so much to do to get something this size kind of locked down. It's kind of one of those projects where it's like, I want to do as much of it as I can off camera, but because I only have so many hours in the day to record, you know, got to do what I can on camera as well. But yeah, do you guys have any uh, Christmas traditions or interesting stuff you do every year for the holidays? I'm trying to think, like we do the Christmas tree. Um, usually I set up a Duplo train around the tree, but I'm hoping next year my daughter we might be big enough for us to get a real Lego train, although those are like not cheap. So that's kind of one of those things like, with the Duplo train, it's like, oh, this is nice. She can play with this year round. But with the Lego train, it's like, oh, this is serious. This is this is a, a real thing. So I'm kind of more on the fence about maybe when she's much older. So we haven't actually set up the Duplo train this year yet, but it's kind of nice because she can do her own little Christmas village or whatever with the Duplos, and uh, she can't break anything valuable, which is always helpful. You know when you're dealing with children, so. Or even if she breaks her Duplo train, like, tracks or whatever, she can rebuild the tracks. You know, it's good. So, I thought about doing something more complicated for this floor here, and I tried out, like, I, I thought about, like, maybe having some sort of crosshatch pattern or something like that, but no matter how I looked at it, it just having a plain blue simple thing here is basically a tint layer that's going to shift the hue of whatever we put below it and so far I haven't really done anything down underneath here but I'm planning on coming in with more of this kind of wool but I think at the distance it's gonna be from here it'll be uh, 
very different visual experience, although that's pure conjecture. Now, I do want to run... I set up a little narrow back door tunnel here so I could get underneath this. Oh, and that's where those ghost blocks were that were plaguing my dreams, haunting my days. Yep, so I can just kind of come through here. If I hit that, will that actually... Yeah, that will start breaking, so I can't look straight up at this. That's unfortunate. Although if I go down a layer, then I can look straight up and hit these. So that's nice. But yeah, I figure I'll just kind of come through here, try not to get lavaed, maybe eat some chicken, keep digging this out. Time skip! There is still so much more left to do, but you know what? I'm really happy with the progress we've made today. We glassed in a good portion of this. We've got what we need to glass in a good portion more. We have dug out this part here. And we thought a little bit about what we want to do with the floor. Make sure to leave comments if you have suggestions or if you have any questions. But you know what? Uh, one thing before we go. I do have a fourth poetry level sponsor this month. Brand new poetry level sponsor on the Patreon, Karis Sophia. So, in lieu of a mid-roll ad on this video, I will now read a poem. Let me, uh, let's find a good place to sit for the poem. I haven't figured out yet where I like to film things in this space. Like, usually, uh, I'll have a... This is not it. This is a... Not it. Okay. Oh, no, now guests couldn't spawn here. Okay, so this has gotten away from us. Quickly, to the glass floor, before the guests. Okay. Like many of my poems, this next piece doesn't actually have a title. But, you know what? Oh, also, we're out of haikus. So, I thought I was only going to have three poems this month to read. But, so I picked like, oh, I've got three haikus? Read those. Nope. Anyway, so this is a, yet another untitled poem by Joe Hills. I've never seen the Pacific. I was in town there once, just near it, with you back east, uh, but never walked the last few miles to the shore. Then, Tonight, when you called from your hotel room, window facing west, your afternoon sun not set, glancing blind and light into your camera sharply, but softly reflecting from the sea to your glowing face, I saw what I was missing all along. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.